here we have a giant Madagascar hognose snake right there. And here he is, and he is much more surly than our western or eastern, southern, even Mexican hognose snakes that we all know and love in North America. Whoa! So I'm gonna look into how giant Madagascar hognose snakes are living out here in the wild so that we better know how to care for them in our homes and not get bit. Whoa! <laughs> I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So what do we actually know about what Madagascar giant hognose snakes are doing in the wild? Well, up until now, very little. There are actually three kinds of hognose snakes in Madagascar. The speckled hognose snake, the golden hognose snake, and the Madagascar giant hognose snake. The giant Madagascar hognose snake is spread throughout the island, where the other two are found primarily in the south side of the island. In this video, we're going to the beautiful rainforests of the eastern part of the island to the giant hognose snake's primary habitat, the lush rainforests where they are plentiful and wild lemurs scream from the treetops right above them. These hognose snakes are so common in this area that in just one day, we found over a dozen of them. All right, guys, look what we found over here. In the jungle here, we have found a giant Madagascar hognose snake. And he is not yet aware that I'm here. And look what he's doing. He's hunting, using that nose to dig up things in the ground. Look at that. He is totally unaware that I'm here. And we can see him in his natural environment, in his natural behavior of hunting. Look at how he scans the ground flicking his tongue, searching out something to eat here. He's now about a foot away from me, and he is still unaware that I'm here. That's how close I am to him, and he is still... Oh, now he just saw me. Did you see him puff up there? But I am so close to him, and he's coming right up to me here. So now he's aware that I'm here. Now he's a little weary. He smells me, and as I stick out my hand, Look at him puff up a little bit. He's annoyed, but he's not yet being defensive. He's just puffing out his neck like a hog nose does, but he's still going back to hunting and literally coming right up to me. Look at this, look at this. That right there is exactly what that upturned nose is for. He is using it as a shovel to dig through the detritus on the forest floor and dig up frogs, he might even be looking for ground nesting birds and their nests. So for this guy right here, I'm not going to disturb him. I'm not going to catch him. I'm just going to let him continue to hunt and do what he does out here in the forests of Madagascar. And I'm sure that we're going to find another one to take a look at. So look at this. Here's the Canadian boys right here. Good day, eh? Look at this. I'm standing here and the snake is right here. What do you guys think about that? Well, let me tell you all about it, eh? Okay, so like I had my double double earlier, right? And I was looking for the hognose snake right by, but I'll tell you what. But then your girlfriend said that there was no way. Is that what you're going to conclude with? Yeah, there is no way, right? Because <laughs> I was telling you one thing, right? I see him hunting there, right? And I think you could smell the mises and the geeses on him, right? But I tell you, it's all about the polar bears. And it's the natural predator of the hognose snake here, right? But I think he's going to go back in the igloo and he'll be fine. Oh, that was some pretty good commentary there. I don't know why I all of a sudden switched to a Minnesota accent there, but I did. Same thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> as we're sitting here, this guy is still actively hunting right in front of us. Dion, have you ever seen anything so absolutely incredible than this hognose snake? Well, it is an impressive animal, but sorry, the Fantasticus are uh, my favorite on this trip. But this is unreal. I never knew that the giant hognoses were actually this giant. I can tell you that much because We've seen some pretty impressively sized snakes here, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Yes, they are. And seeing them in their natural environment this comfortable doing this is out of this world. Yeah, absolutely it is. But, I mean, look at this. There's one of the cabins right there. There's a trail right here. We've got this entire huge natural rainforest right behind us. And that may be the third hognose that we've found so far. I believe it literally is. Yep. So, as you can see, we're just going to let this one go and get back to hunting without disturbing it. We're going to find another one to take a better look at. 
Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. So this is one of the varied habitats of the giant Madagascar hognose snake. We've got this kind of open forest, smaller trees, smaller canopy that the light can penetrate down to the surface where it can heat the surface. And look at that. Right there is yet another hognose snake. These guys are common and everywhere. And look at this, there's another hognose knot maybe 20 feet away from that one that was hunting. There are so many of these giant Madagascar hognose snakes in this area, it is amazing. We were hoping we'd see one, and this may be the fourth one that we've seen. All right, so if this is where that snake is, yeah, you can go, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Have, have a nice day, buddy. All right, so if this was the, where that snake was, I'm gonna get a humidity and an ambient temperature reading right where that snake was. But I'm also at the same time gonna get a body temperature read on the snake itself. And look at that, 26 degrees Celsius, which is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the body temperature of the snake itself. The ground temperature around the snake, look at that, 79 over there. 79 over there, 79 over there, which again is 26 degrees Celsius. So the snake's body temperature is the exact same temperature as the ground and its surroundings itself. But let's see what we have for humidity and ambient. We have 85% humidity and 28 degrees Celsius which is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the ambient temperature and the humidity that these snakes are living at here in Madagascar. And they are common here and they are thriving in this forest environment. So these hognose snakes are thriving in a rainforest environment like this in eastern Madagascar, but they occupy a wide variety of habitats. They are also found in grasslands, rocky grasslands, just the same way that our plains hognose snakes are found in North America. These guys are the perfect example of convergent evolution. These guys have evolved almost the exact same way as the hognoses in North America and South America have. All right, look at this, guys. Here is yet another giant Madagascar hognose snake. Hi. Come here, sweethearts. Come here, come here. All right, so now look at that defense. He's flattening out his neck, but you know what? Look at this. This is how gentle these snakes are. This is an absolute wild snake. And I just walked up and put hands on him and all he's doing is trying to get away. So have a look at this big bruiser. This is the biggest giant Madagascar hognose snake we found and this isn't even an adult. These guys can get from four to six feet long and as big as this guy is, again, they get bigger than this. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to talk about what giant Madagascar hognose snakes are eating out here in the wild. So with eastern hognose snakes in North America, they are eating primarily toads. They are specialized toad breeders. Well, this guy isn't eating toads out here. This guy has never eaten a toad in his life. And the reason why I know that is because there are no toads in Madagascar. So these guys are opportunistic feeders and they are eating pretty much anything that they can fit down their throats. They are out here hunting for ground nesting birds. They are eating frogs and they are also eating giant lizards here. These quite large Madagascan collared iguanas are definitely on the menu for giant hognose snakes. In fact, I'll crouch down to give a size comparison to show how big these iguanas actually uh, are. I guess not. I didn't tell you to leave. Get back here. But in our homes, these guys will readily take mice off of tongs with no problems. They're actually relatively easy to feed in our homes. And that is one of the allure of giant Madagascar hognose snakes, is that they are big hognose snakes. And they really are beautiful with those blacks and those yellows. And they're very handleable even out here in the wild. So when we think about UV light for snakes, let's face it. 
A lot of us don't. A lot of us don't consider that UV light is beneficial to snakes, especially diurnal snakes, and that is a huge mistake, and it's not true. All living creatures on the planet benefit from UV light, whether you're diurnal, whether you're crepuscular, UV light is important. So when it comes to UV light for hognose snakes, which are diurnal out here, it's a really good practice to offer your hognose snakes at home, whether they be giant Madagascar hognoses or whether they be tricolor hognoses from South America or our North American hognose snakes. UV light is an important aspect of keeping hognoses healthy that is often overlooked. But obviously those snakes are on the forest floor here. So I'll take a reading here on the forest floor to see how much ultraviolet light is penetrating past this canopy and reaching the forest floor where hog noses spend the majority of their time. All right, so I'm gonna take it right down here, right on the forest floor, and you can see that it is 0.3 on the Ferguson zone. So very little UV light actually penetrates the canopy to get down to the forest floor. But enough of it does for you to be offering UV light in your enclosures for their overall health and well-being in your enclosures. So look at this, if you know how to handle these snakes, I mean, he is alarmed, he's worried that I'm a predator that has just picked him up and is about to eat him. But if you handle him nice and gentle, just like this, let him crawl throughout your hands, don't grab him, don't restrain him, he's gonna calm right down when he realizes that he's not in as much trouble as he thought that he was when I first laid hands on him. So I'm just gonna hold him like this for a little bit just to give you a good look at that rostral scale, that nose scale. And as you can see, Madagascar hognose snakes' noses are not as sharp and defined and as upturned as their North American cousins are. But they certainly have that enlarged rostral scale that gives them the name hognose snake. All right, so this little guy has been very good to us. I'm gonna let him go on his way. But again, this is a juvenile, and this might be maybe the 10th, 12th, maybe 13th that we found. I don't know, I've lost count, but it certainly shows just how common these snakes are here in Madagascar. All right, buddy, off you go. <laughs> What an amazing snake. Enough said. Stay green, save green. So here, just outside of this human habitation, look at this. We've got another hog nose that Dion is filming here, and it's just actively out hunting. I never realized how big these are. I feel like some of the imports I've seen are like half the size. Right, well, that's imports. And and they're so chill. I mean, you can just literally, yeah, look at this. You can just walk right up to them. But this is, this is incredible. I'm walking right behind this snake. This is a wild snake. And Dion from Reptiliatus is standing right in front of him. This snake is showing no signs of alarm, not trying to escape. I, this is incredible, look at this. Look at that, right up to Dion, right into his camera, <laughs> and then notices you and... Puts out. Yeah, right. I, that is just incredible. These have such different behaviors than hognose snakes around the world. I mean, they're so curious and they're so smart. But look at this, he is literally going right up to Dion like a puppy. So look at this. I can go right up to the snake and I can just touch him. Look at that. And he just crawls right through my fingers. You know, I'll tell you guys, in all the hog noses that I have been lucky enough to encounter all over the world, the Western hog noses, the Eastern hog noses, the Mexican hog noses, they all put on this display where they carry on, they feign death, they poop all over themselves. Here, these hog noses are just, they don't even care that you're there. They're just like little puppy dogs out here. And I've never experienced a hognose snake have this kind of behavior in the wild before. All right, that was actually really cool. There you go, more vanilla. More vanilla. Oh, so here, yeah. um, not, not hognose related, but Dion just pointed this out. Uh, this is actually a vanilla orchid. I, I don't know that I've ever seen one before. They're all over the place. And wow. They produce the flower and the vanilla bean. So we came to learn about hognose snakes. 
And now we learn something about vanilla. So while I still have this giant in my hands, I'm going to talk a little bit about caging. Caging for giant Madagascar hognose snakes is very different than keeping plains hognose snakes or eastern hognose snakes or Mexican hognose snakes, even keeping tricolored hognose snakes from South America. These guys are wanderers out here and therefore they do need large enclosures. A four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure is pretty much mandatory for these guys. I know a lot of people keep them in giant rack systems and they do well but they do need lots of space to wander. And on that note, a lot of people will shy away from cohabbing snakes, lizards, other reptiles. These guys actually do better being cohabbed. And I know a lot of breeders that have a lot of success cohabbing groups of giant Madagascar hognose snakes in the same enclosure. They do better, they fare better, they eat better. You have to separate them to feed them, of course. Out here in the wild, in a small little area, we are seeing a lot of Madagascar hognose snakes living together, hunting together. They're not necessarily communal snakes, but they do better being cohabbed. They will breed much more easy and much more proficiently cohabbing them. And I know that the idea of cohabbing reptiles is frowned upon, but with these guys, I do know from experience that it is actually a benefit if you intend to breed your giant Madagascar hognose snake. And that's another reason why these guys need large enclosures. So guys, I hope that this video has given you some insight into how to better care for these amazing giant Madagascar hognose snakes. These are one of the most rewarding snakes that you will ever work with. So as always with the In the Wild videos, leave a comment below with a tip or a technique on how you're keeping giant Madagascar hognose snakes or any of the other Madagascar hognose snakes so that other people can learn from you as well. And until the next reptile adventure from here in Madagascar, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.